Greetings everyone and thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. I'm Don Valiant and this is the news from Kyungi Province this week. On March 19th, Kyungi Province opened a COVID-19 treatment center in Yongin City so as to provide convalescing patients with quarantined recovery assistance in a comfortable living environment. Established at the Life Park Training Center of Hanhua Life, this is the first such center to be designated by the province. This center consists of 160 single rooms, each equipped with a bed, toilet, shower, and a TV, as well as other daily necessities. At this center, patients who are transferred from other hospitals will receive recovery services before returning home. This center is not a substitute for a hospital, but instead a temporary replacement for homes. It helps patients return to their lives after psychological and emotional recovery. According to this agreement, Hanhua Life will offer its facilities for center use, while Kyunggi Province and Seoul National University Bundang Hospital will undertake management and medical services, respectively. In addition, public officials, medical workers, police, military personnel, and service contractors will also participate in the operation of the center through the provision of various services, including administration, waste disposal, medical support, and transportation. The first arrivals at the center will be 60 patients out of the 180 currently in provincial hospitals. Kyungi Province plans to establish a second COVID-19 treatment center in preparation for prolonged conditions. With the COVID-19 crisis continuing in Korea, Kyungi Province has been utilizing a call center and broadcast channel to provide hearing impaired members of the public with related information. Kyungi Province has been operating a sign language call center for hearing and speech impaired residents since 2007 through a service agency. This call center, accessible around the clock, provides information via diverse channels, including a website, a messaging service, and video calls. Since the outbreak of COVID-19, this call center has been receiving more than 50 inquiries daily about symptoms, mask purchasing, and hospital availability. Corona 19 때문에 경기도 내 많은 농아인들이 걱정스러워하고 있습니다. 정보를 어떻게 접 받을 수 있는지 그런 문제를 해결하기 위해서 의사소통 지원 센터에서 24시간 동안 계속 전화 상담하고 도움을 드리고 있습니다. Kyungi Province is also operating customized broadcasting services for hearing and speech impaired residents. These services are provided by the Kyungi Broadcasting Station for the Deaf. It airs more than 100 programs that cover diverse topics, including agricultural news, weekly issues, information for living, and regional information. These programs are accessible via the YouTube channels of the Kyungi Province Association for the Deaf and the Kyungi Broadcasting Station for the Deaf. 네, 경기도에서는 청각 언어 장애를 겪고 계신 분들의 정보 접근권 강화를 위해서 수어 콜 센터와 경기 농화 방송에 대한 지원을 앞으로도 지속적으로 강화해 나가도록 하겠습니다. With the call center and broadcast becoming even more important during the COVID-19 outbreak, Kyungi Province will continue its support for these services so as to ensure their effective operation. Recently in Kyungi Province, a large number of environmental law violations that generated air polluting microdust were uncovered. These violations included the illegal incineration of construction materials and unlicensed burning of coated waste wood near residential areas. At the break of dawn, a thick black smoke rises from a construction site next to apartment buildings. This smoke comes from a drum being used to burn waste wood. A furniture factory was caught burning waste wood in a burner. These materials are medium density fireboards, or MDFs, that must be incinerated by licensed waste disposal companies.
이게 이게 뭐예요? 이게 MDF 아니에요? 맞죠? 지금은 저희가 기계밭이 몇 개만 넣었어요 진짜로 이해 좀 해주세요 A charcoal kiln operator operated without receiving approval for the use of air pollutant generating equipment. Another charcoal kiln operator was found to have neglected the use of emission control facilities that it possessed. 대기 배출 시설을 설치하게 되면 비용이 좀 많이 들기 때문에 또그 설치 비용도 들지만 그 처리하는 데 있어서 톤당 한 제가 알기로는 한 15만 원에서 20만 원 정도의 처리 비용이 들거든요. 그 경제적 부담 또 경제적 이익을 추구하기 위해서. Through the investigations conducted by the Gyeonggi Province Special Judicial Police during the microdust control period, a total of 54 related environmental law violations were uncovered. Violations include illegal incineration, use of emission facilities without approval, and neglect in emission control facility operation. The Gyeonggi Province Special Judicial Police will press criminal charges against violators while imposing strict administrative measures which are not replaceable by fines. Recently, Gyeonggi Province donated three mobile containers with COVID-19 screening facilities to the quarantine office of Incheon International Airport. Each container consists of five rooms for specimen collection and medical examinations. One container was installed at Terminal 1 and two containers were installed at Terminal 2. These mobile screening facilities are also equipped with sterilization and negative pressure equipment that can prevent virus transmission and secondary infection. On March 23rd, the 342nd Extraordinary Session of the Gyeonggi Provincial Assembly opened for a three-day run exclusively to review items prepared to address the COVID-19 crisis, including revised supplementary budgets. With the urgency of the matters being addressed as an undercurrent, this extraordinary session began in a solemn atmosphere. 경기도에는 코로나 19로 인한 전염병 확산 방지 못지않게 경제 생태계가 파괴되는 현상을 매우 심각하게 보고 있습니다. 그래서 오늘 이렇게 추경 예산안의 심의를 위한 원 포인트 임시회를 열게 되었습니다. The revised supplementary budgets the first to be proposed this early in 10 years were reviewed in an expedited manner since they pertain to various actions geared to help overcome the COVID-19 crisis. With these supplementary budgets, which amount to 1.2 trillion Korean won, the total provincial budget increases to approximately 28.2 trillion Korean won. During the session, Gyeonggi Province Governor Lee Jae-myung appealed for assembly members to approve the budgets as presented. 아시다시피 이번 추경은 감염병 위기 또 그로부터 파생된 경제 위기로부터 우리 도민의 삶을 하루 빨리 회복시켜 드리기 위해서 긴급하게 추진하는 추경입니다. 도민의 건강과 안전은 물론 지역 경제 회복을 위한 이번 추경이 적재적소에 제대로 집행될 수 있도록 최선을 다하겠습니다. The revised supplementary budgets were passed on March 25th at the second general meeting. This extraordinary session also saw the passage of an ordinance for disaster basic income payments to help Gyeonggi residents overcome difficulties stemming from the COVID-19 crisis. In order to help Gyeonggi province residents overcome the economic crisis caused by COVID-19, the province will make disaster-related basic income payments to provincial residents regardless of age or income level. With the ongoing COVID-19 crisis looming over the Korean economy, people are facing difficult times. At a press conference on March 24th, Gyeonggi Province announced that it will take bold action to help residents overcome the COVID-19 crisis through disaster-related basic income payments. Payments of 100,000 Korean won will be made from next month in the form of Gyeonggi regional currency to Gyeonggi province residents, regardless of their age or income level. In total, the disaster-related basic income payments to be made by Gyeonggi province 
will amount to approximately 1.36 trillion Korean won. This non-discriminant sharing of money will help the economies of households as well as small businesses and backstreet commerce through increased consumption. 경기도형 재난 기본 소득이 국가 차원의 기본 소득 도입의 단초가 되고 새로운 시대에 걸맞는 새 정책으로 자리 잡게 되기를 소망합니다. The disaster related basic income will be paid immediately upon request to individuals or to those who apply on behalf of their families upon confirmation of identification at local administration and welfare offices. The extraordinary session of the Kyungi Provincial Assembly, held exclusively for the review of COVID 19 related items, has ended. During the session, the Assembly passed revised supplementary budgets and an ordinance for disaster-related basic income payments of 100,000 Korean won to Kyungi province residents. The disaster-related basic income ordinance was passed unanimously during the general meeting on March 25th. This ordinance, the first of its kind in Korea, enables Kyungi to pay basic income to residents of the province in the event of disaster. According to this ordinance, the province will make COVID-19 disaster-related basic income payments of 100,000 Korean won to more than 13 million residents of the province in the form of regional currency. This extraordinary session also saw the passage of this year's first revised supplementary budgets. With the supplementary budgets, which will be used for COVID-19 related measures, the total provincial budget increased to almost 29 trillion Korean won. The COVID-19 related budgets include funds required for disaster basic income payments, monetary support for working class families, and the expansion of loans for individuals with low credit ratings. 무너지는 경제를 되살리는 경제 방역이 꼭 필요할 때입니다. 집행부는 이번에 심의 의결해 주신 추경 예산을 신속하게 집행하여 도민들께서 겪고 계신 혹독한 어려움을 한시라도 빨리 조금이나마 덜어드리도록 하겠습니다. The next extraordinary session of the Kyungi Provincial Assembly, which will run from April 21st to 29th, will see item review as well as inquiries on administrative matters. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. We look forward to seeing you again next week.